Okay, design principles and user interface for UI design. The principles that I'll be introducing you to, to are mainly based in the famous Gestalt theory. Gestalt psychology was founded in the early 20th century in Germany and Austria by Max Wertheimer and Kurt Kafka, Wolfgang Kohler. Since then, it has found acceptance in disciplines ranging from therapy to cybernetics to design. Gestalt is a German word and literally means shape or form. And this is fitting because the theory describes how the mind transforms apparent randomness into relatable forms. As a verb, gestalten would mean to design. For graphic designers, employing gestalt principles is an essential tool. Designers are able to emphasize visual relationships and communicate more effectively when they understand how viewers interpret visual information. In a nutshell, what Gestalt theory says is that we perceive entire patterns rather than single components. A set of rules was established about how we perceive those patterns. It's important to note that while Gestalt psychologists call this phenomenal laws, it's more accurate the term would be principles. Gestalt principles are much like heuristics, which are mental shortcuts for solving problems. Law of similarity, law of common fate, law of proximity, law of simplicity, law of closure, law of symmetry. And these rules really um, aren't really static. For example, in the 1990s, some more were added by other psychologists, the law of common region and law of continuity. Gestalt theory is the foundation about how our minds read and interpret things. Thus, the core of design principles, especially in UI design, once we design, understand the role, rules on how the human brain interprets patterns, we can play with them to create and structure our designs. So what is it that makes the difference in design? What is the secret behind a perfect distribution of space size, and contrast that seems so pleasing to us. The core of it all is a working visual hierarchy. Visual hierarchy is the method of organizing design elements to communicate an order of importance. Hierarchy is one of the most critical principles of design. Like the term implies, this meaning means highlighting the visual elements that are most important to a composition. Without establishing hierarchy, it's likely that individuals looking at a design will consider each element equally important. A regular problem in interface design is the excessive use of elements or components scattered on the screen, which if not placed through a correct hierarchy, generate disorder and a greater effort in navigating. The exercise of prioritizing these elements is important to avoid this problem. Visual hierarchy allows you to add all information, but in such a way that it creates a peaceful foundation that's easy to digest and draws your attention to the highlights. Let's look at some real world examples. In this snapshot of HipCamp, <coughs> excuse me, homepage, the visual hierarchy is communicated through font size and contrast. The headline, is much larger in size than the subtitle. Uh, the average user tends to scan the entire content of a screen. Therefore, the highlight should give clear ideas of what the website or application is about. This prioritization should not only be treated as an aesthetic problem, but also as an important part of the user experience. Many of the elements included, especially in mobile devices, will be relevant to site navigation. While the hierarchy in graphic design has existed for years, the con consistent interaction factor is added to the UI design. The fact that users interact with elements make it more relevant to design an intuitive interface. Color. In this Cabify screenshot, the use of purple color acts as the primary color, both the route of the trip 
and the continue button are first hierarchy, followed by the map and the car in second hierarchy. This harmonic use of hue and saturation separates these elements from a more unsaturated and less important background. Color is a powerful visual resource. Its proper use can effectively separate the elements on a screen, prioritize or deprioritize them. In interface design, often the strongest color is for interaction because of the user's need to take action or receive feedback from a system. There are three ways to create hierarchy using color. You wanna look at hue, you can look at saturation and brightness. Harnessing typefaces. Typefaces with different sizes and weights can also be used to increase hierarchy and make more important text elements stand out. Most websites are designed to make use of different size headings as well as to give importance or callouts to content associated with them. It's good practice to use headings, H1, as the largest and most important headline of a page and use headings 2, H2, or 3, known as H3, and so on to call out less important areas. This also helps readers scan through pages of text and land on the exact area that interests them. Slack's website is a great example of a site that uses headings to give content an order of importance. In the banner section, they have the largest header with the additional information and some call action calls to action that make the area feel the most important. Below the banner, there are many sections with smaller headers to introduce more features. So in addition to the font sizes, you can also use different font weights to make the fonts of the same size appear heavier or lighter. So you can also balance larger fonts that have a lighter weight with smaller fonts that have a heavier weight, so they're perceived with similar importance. In this example, we have three different font sizes. However, notice how the bottom font size catches more of your attention, even though the top font is the largest. This is because the font below appears to be heavier with more contrast. So overall summary for hierarchy is the visual hierarchy helps to organize elements to communicate an order of importance. It guides a user's attention. It makes things visually more appealing easier scanning and understanding, and draws attention to highlights. More often in the not in graphic design, keeping it simple works really well. In design, there's a general consensus that less is more, i.e. less is more striking. We consider simplicity to ensure a piece of communication has maximum clarity. We consider simplicity to create balance and impact. Simple design is easier to understand and is more likely to make a lasting impression. The law of simplicity states that pre preference is given to forms with a memorable and simple structure in order to avoid overwhelming. Simplicity is the discipline of minimizing, refining, or editing back a design. When applying simplicity in design, we should avoid an overwhelming amount of visual elements. We should try and get across one strong idea instead of incorporating many. Researchers also show that people are better at processing and thus remembering simple shapes. Unless you have a good reason for a fancy shape, stick to clear lines and straightforward shapes in your layouts. As you can see, it's way easier to process all the information of what is exactly happening on this page. It's a win-win situation because it makes your life so much simpler when it comes to programming. And no, simple shapes will not make your design boring. You can bring dynamic design with different sizes using those different shapes, colors, and spacing. Let's look at an example. This older version, like, you know, early 90s, mid 90s, I probably, a uh, version of an independent coffee shop is overwhelming to look at overall. There are too many elements fighting our attention. Too many textures, images, colors, typefaces, overwhelming our senses. This is how interfaces were designed at the beginning stages of web design. And this is what you know everyone was doing. 
Now let's look at what we're doing today. The local, this local Stone Creek Coffee homepage uses the simplistic aesthetic way of presenting their offerings with minimalistic effort, efforts and yet incredibly high impact to the presented delicacies that they offer. <coughs> As you can see, it's not boring, but it's very clear, easy to navigate and grasp. And there's a lot of opportunity to play with those simple shapes. They're using size, they're using color, and they're using certain feelings of images and shadows to bring this layout alive. As you can see, we can take away a lot of cognitive load from our mind that will be busy otherwise breaking down complex shapes into simple ones. So in summary, the human eye simplifies complex shapes into simple uniform shapes. Simple forms lead to a lower cognitive load. So try to use forms with a memorable and simple structure to avoid overwhelming the user. The law of similarity is one of the original Gestalt principles when it comes to grouping. It basically states that elements that are visually similar will be perceived as related. Your main tools to create this feeling of belonging will be size, color, and shape. Note that the order I'm presenting you, this is not random. Color is the strongest communicator followed by size and then shape. For designers, keeping elements similar in construction gives them freedom to vary the arrangement without confusing the viewer. Let me show you this little example here on the power of these small changes can really be. In this image, it's neutral. All dots are the same. Now you probably see two separate groupings of colored circles as rows rather than just a collection of dots. In this one, the dots are one group and the squares are another. And finally, we are using scale to create the groups. So here's a brand style guide um, from my capstone students um, from 2021. And they used Figma on this. Uh, with everything in UX UI, the key of all this is to have a clear style guide. When you see certain set of rules for color, for example, you have a set of palette and then define colors to use as neutrals or as your highlight color. So you can see, here's an example. This is um, done by the students that have the typography laid out and really clearly defined what the size of the, what the typeface is, what the size is for the headers going H1 down, type pairings, what, what they're gonna use for pairing, the color palettes and how they're seeing them used primary, secondary, accents, light and dark. Um, and then there's also components and so on and so forth. It's a good practice to use a highlight color as a method to communicate to the user what is actionable and clickable. So I would not randomly use my highlight color in a headline just because I think it would look nice. but I would use it, for example, as a clickable link or on a button. This shape applies to a button throughout my page will also identify as part of a group. And thus I would expect a certain group behavior of the same for typography. This is a topic that keeps coming up because it's a very important part of our UI design. You can have a set of styles for headlines, copy, text and buttons and so on. Um, but all the components of this standalone project will have a set of rules on how they use color, shape, and size. So in, summer, in um, summary, visual similar, visually similar items will be perceived as related. You can create this feeling of belonging together with color, size, and shape. Orientation, behavior, and movement can play an important role and use a style guide design system for a systematic and con consistent approach. All right, size is our next subject. Size is a very important element when it comes to creating hierarchy. Larger elements are perceived as more important than smaller elements, 
This can be used with images, texts, or blocks of information. Let's look at an example. Here we have a home page where the image and text are in order and styled, but they're relatively similar in size. If we add some hierarchy throughout sizing, uh, through sizing, we achieve something like this. Now you can see that this is immediately helps us to scan important information and focus. While this is quite straightforward when it comes to images or blocks of information, typography is really, really where you need to focus. What does it mean and how can we achieve this? So be very careful about which ones are your headlines, your subheads, your intros, your kicker text. Also note that the perception of size can be achieved by using something like a bold text over a regular text or uppercase letters. Make sure you're being consistent and strategic with your typography and sizing throughout your design. Make sure that you use a type scale to set clear rules. To do this, we will start with our base font size. This is the most common text which your standard body or copy text. So per default in almost all browsers, it's set to 16 points. Depending on your typeface, you could theoretically go a little smaller or a little larger, but the base, the rule of thumb is 16 points. Besides hierarchy, it's also important to remember that sizing plays a major role in usability and accessibility. All of your touch targets, such as buttons or clickable icons, must be large enough for users to click, not only with their mouse, but also with their fingers when we're doing an app or a tablet. There's a lot of research out there on how large this really should be. It can differ a bit, but not significantly. Uh, I'm using a number here given by the, Ameri the Human Interface Guidelines by Apple Design, which at the moment states that 44 point should be an ideal target size. Now note that it's fine if the item itself is a little smaller, but it needs to have space around it so that it's not gonna, you're not gonna accidentally click on something else. So you wanna have that safe zone of 44 points around each target. The important part is that clickable area. So is a special, um, always make sure that there's enough space between buttons as well, because you don't want to frustrate your user by accidentally activating the wrong button. So when we're thinking about size, uh, larger elements are perceived as more important than smaller elements. Be systematic and have a clear hierarchy, generally for everything, but especially when it comes to typography. Remember to consider different screen sizes and make sure your touch targets are large enough. Proximity. When placing objects in our layout, we need to consider the law of proximity. It simply means that objects in proximity to one another will be seen as a group rather than individual parts. This effect is one of the original Gestalt principles and its great sense of grouping and belonging. How can we use this when it comes to UI design? When can we use it to group similar items of information intersections to de declutter our layouts? Well, the law of proximity can be applied pretty much everywhere throughout your design. Like here, you can see that every, even though my text has hierarchy applied in terms of sizing, you will still perceive it as being belonging to the upper part of the layout. Whereas now it becomes part of the picture library below. Just as proximity can create a sense of grouping, you can also achieve the exact opposite by adding negative or white space. That can be very handy. For example, between sections, in order to create a clear distinction, pixels don't cost extra, so use them and let it breathe. Negative space or white space really makes the difference in a design. As with all design elements, using space should be a systematic approach. Here come the grids. So yeah, there are two important rules that will determine the position and distance of your design. You wanna think about your grid system and spacing system. Now, two of them often get confused and it's important to understand what each of them does and that they work hand in hand most of the time. So your grid system sets the horizontal distribution and broader layout 
you would place your items within the grid and then use the set gutter as a horizontal dis uh, distance. However, for your vertical spacing and for the spacing within the items, you would use a spacing system. The spacing system is basically a multiply of your base size that you define. So up till now, we've always worked in grids having, um, you've, you've worked with modular grids, most of us already, we understand you know, column grids. So what we work with here in, when we're working digitally is we're gonna work with the column grids. And then for spacing, we don't use modules. We're gonna use a spacing system. And we wanna base it on an eight point spacing system. This is because Google Pixel Grid from Google Material Design kind of set the, the set this as a standard. And so in, in web design and in app design, this is a standard for UAT user um, interface design. The smallest size and base size is eight as a distance, and then everything else is a multiple of eight. So you look at it this way. Um, there's many advantages to why you would use an eight point scaling system, or you can also bring it into a four point. So these two spacing systems scale amazingly well with browser font sizes that's usually per default set to 16, which is a multiple of eight. And as well as icons that you usually find in 24 or 48 pixels. Another aspect is that those numbers scale really well when exporting assets to other resolutions. So you can scale it up, but can also scale it down, for example, to 1.5 when it comes to an Android phone. This way you avoid half pixels and blurriness. So in this world, we really need to work in standardizations and those standard standardizations have already been set. So summary, oh, sorry. Option, objects in proximity to one another will be seen as a group. Create a sense of grouping and belonging to your layout. White space is king, use it. Add space between sections, don't crowd everything. Add consistency, use a grid system and a spacing system. Common region. The law of common region states that the elements within defined region tend to be perceived as belonging together. This was not part of the original Gestalt, but it was added later by Parma in the 90s. Common region is a powerful tool that gives clear structure to the user to what belongs together. So showing common region can also aid perceived multiple groupings at a time. For example, in a comparison table, it's important to distinguish both the column for product or service and the row for each characteristic. Zebra stripes, where alternating rows have colored backgrounds, are a common method of uniting horizontal elements while white space or another broad border, sorry, distinguishes each column. It can seem like a mere, a minor layout technique or to highlight things, but it makes such a difference. Common region can be anything from an outline to a very subtle gray tone that's in the background that devises your pages into intersections. Creating those sections is a great helper to the user in order to not be overwhelmed by the content. Let's look at a real life example. Food Network's tablet app, an older version of the app's grid layer suf layout suffered from proximity issues. Allowing room for long titles to wrap around multiple lines created excess white space under most titles and made it difficult to tell which byline and rating went with which recipe. You know, was it above or below, especially as you were scrolling down? A later version corrected this problem by using the card layout style to create common region for each recipe's image, title, and details. So elements with a defined region tend to be perceived as belonging together. Ideal for structure in your layout. Region can be full color, a shape, or an outline. Let's sum up. Elements with a defined region. Um, I already just said it, yeah. 
sorry. So there we go, end of the show. And these are all things that we wanna be thinking about as we move into our layouts of our interfaces.